welcome back to the lecture series in NPTEL on bioelectricity. So, in the last lecture, uh, we talked about we initiated the patch clamp. In the last half of the lecture, I introduced the patch, patch clamp. So, we talked about how you develop the electrodes, and I told you that there are the name itself called clamp. So, essentially, you are holding clamping a part of the membrane and at one part of the membrane by following the equivalent circuit model, you can clamp two parameters. Either you can clamp the current, that is why it is called current clamp or you can clamp the voltage, it is called voltage clamp. So, we will resume our discussion from that point that uh, what all parameters you can measure. Okay. So, so, once again we are into lecture 11. So, resuming on patch clamp. Okay. So, this is where we were. So, in the last lecture, while well, I was giving you the dimensions, I told you that this technique helps you to approach a finite number of ion channels. So, just to have a recap, what I was trying to tell you, if we call this as a membrane, this is the membrane structure you have and on that you have these embedded channel structures which are sitting along. These are the embedded channels all along it. Just for the simplicity sake, I am just drawing 7 or 8 channels out here okay. and then your patch pipe it which which has a dimension of around like you know 1 micron tip something like this. You can really hold a finite number of channels under the patch. So, what you do once you, so this is just slightly advanced. So, let me come back, what you do once you have the electrodes ready with you. So, now what you are having is essentially you have something like this, you have pulled it and with a tip like this and something like this. Okay. Now, you have two options, you can fill this electrode either with uh, either with extracellular fluid or intracellular fluid. Okay. extracellular fluid or depending on the configuration you want to follow intracellular fluid. These are the two options. So, now once again let us draw the patch electrode, here we have the patch electrode and either intracellular or extracellular, extra or intra. And then inside this you put a silver electrode, this is the silver electrode. Okay. The silver electrode first is connected to a something called a head stage amplifier or the initial amplifier out here and from here it goes to the main amplifier. And whereas, you have a another electrode which is your ground electrode which is let us show it like this, which is essentially going here. So, here you have the main, uh, main amplifier and here you have the ground electrode and in between you have something called a head stage amplifier which is out here. So, the way it works you have to understand the logic, the way it works there are two amplifiers here, one is a small head stage amplifier which is picking up all the signals then it transmits the signal to the main amplifier. In the main amplifier all these analog signals 
are being processed. So, what is an amplifier? A amplifier is essentially is a device inside it, it contains a very powerful electrometer. That electrometer is essentially measuring the charges and they are amplifying that current, because since you are receiving current at a very small regime like you know nano, nano ampere, pico ampere. So, you have to really amplify that okay, in order to distinguish it from the surrounding noise. So, those currents eventually these are all analog currents you are receiving these analog currents are now sent to a DAC card, which is a digital to analog to or AD card, okay. analog to digital converter ADC, analog to digital converter. From analog to digital converter, these and now this digitized signals. So, what is happening essentially is like this. So, what you are receiving from the pipette is analog signals. these analog signals are converted into digital signals. These digital signals are then sent to the computer for analysis. Okay. You can really see it in the computer screen, but nowadays with the modern uh, electronics what you essentially can do you can use the computer to give the command also. So, what do you need? for the signal which is coming from the pipette like this, this is coming from the from the measuring uh, electrode. Uh, if I just make it slightly more precise from measuring electrode to the amplifiers from amplifiers it goes to the analog to AD card and similarly the same computer now can give a command which will be the reverse route which it gives a digital command again a digital command. These digital command is converted into analog command because that is what a cell will understand this analog command is eventually sent to the cell. So, it is pretty much a two way traffic you can use a computer both for recording as well as giving commands. Though initially when patch clamp was discovered computer was slowly like you know there is not very many computer PCs were nowhere there this was back in 1970s, but the modern electronics has equipped us with all these features that this whole process has become much more smooth you really can acquire a lot of data. So, coming back where I was stopping ok. So, now, now you have this main amplifier here. So, with this setup let me introduce let us assume to start off first with that we fill it with intracellular solution. Now, this electrode is fit on a micro manipulator. So, this micro manipulator where it is fit it has the potential to make this electrode move in all the three axes. So, essentially if, if this is kind of so, let us introduce the micro manipulator component here. So, it is connected to the micro manipulator where you have this knob, you have this knob, and you have this knob. So, that ensures that you can move it in x, y, and z axis. In all the axis, you should be able to move the micro uh, move this electrode. So, essentially this electrode can move like this, this electrode can go up and down and this electrode can travel a distance something like this also. So, the practical applications say for example, now I 
let us see a practical situation where we have the cell culture dish. So, this is the cell culture dish out here and this is the matrix on which the cells will grow. On this matrix now let us put the cells. So, let us represent the cells by these are the individual cells sitting. Okay. So, now we want to study this study the electrical properties of these individual cells. So, let us be slightly more realistic to look through. So, this is the nucleus and the cells are sitting and here we have a patch electrode with us. Let us put the patch electrode in place. And inside the patch electrode, you have you have this silver and it is filled with the intracellular fluid to start off with. Now, using the micro uh, micro manipulator, you are approaching the cell. So, basically going down on the cell. Eventually, what will happen if I just show you the stage 2, you will have the tip of the electrode touching on top of the cell. And this is the amplifier. Okay. So, this is exactly the situation. So, if I represent all the ion channels on top of this uh, top of this cell as like something like this, if you consider these black dots are the ion channels on on the surface of the cell. So, now you have finite number of ion channels in a very close proximity of the electrode. This is very important, okay. so, because this is the diagram which I was trying to show in this slide. So, now what you have, you have finite number of ion channels under that small pipette tip which is approximately 0 0.5 to say 1 micron. Okay. At this stage, there is a very simple technique which is being done. Along this, in this I did not introduce that, now I am going to introduce it. You have a small tubing which is connected to it for giving a gentle suction. And we will see what happens when you give a gentle suction at this stage. So, let us move on to the next slide. Let us magnify this conform, uh, configuration, so, so that it becomes, it makes more sense. So, here is our cell sitting here, something like this, individual cell and we want to patch this cell and what we have are a series of ion channels on its surface. These black dots are the ion channels that I was showing in the previous slide. They are all over the place, all scattered around on the surface, of course. And here you have the nucleus of the cell. So, okay. now your patch electrode configuration. Let us look at it, where the patch electrode is sitting. Now, much more magnified zone, your patch electrode is sitting something like this.
almost touching on the surface. Okay. Now, at this point you give a gentle suction that is what I was trying to show you in the previous slide. You just give a slight suction what will happen this this particular part of the cell will get inside the patch pipette. Initially this is what is going to happen. Okay. So, now if I introduce the ion channels, the ion channels are sitting on top of these. Now, we have started when we started I told you that let us assume that this is filled with intracellular fluid. Intracellular fluid and here we have the silver electrode which is moving to the amplifier. Now, at this stage there are two options. First option is that the first configuration is called the whole cell configuration, when you have the whole cell within your control. In the whole cell what you do? You send a small impulse or a current pulse out here, which is good enough to damage this membrane. And what you are left with is this configuration in a whole cell, this is it, then this is the configuration you are left with then. Here is your electrode tip like this and here is the cell. Here is the electrode flowing out, this is the ground electrode and this is the intracellular fluid filled in it. Mind it, this is fairly thin, I am just for your understanding, I am showing it slightly bigger. So, this is since this is intracellular fluid inside the cell you also have intracellular fluid. So, these fluids are the same osmolarity. So, essentially now your electrode becomes part of the cell, it becomes almost it is in continuous with the cell. So, whatsoever current which are either moving out or inside the cell out here through these ion channels now could be recorded. Okay. So, this is the first and first and most uh, uh, I should say most important configuration to understand the whole cell electrophysiology. Now, what all you can do? Let us see the power of this technique. At this stage you can hold the membrane at different voltages. You can hold the membrane at different voltage and you can measure the current or what you can do, you can hold the sorry, you can inject finite amount of current inside this cell and you can measure the change in voltage. So, first of all let us try to do that. Step 1, so first of all do the current clamp. And then we will do the voltage clamp. Current clamp essentially means you are injecting finite amount of current inside the cell and changing its polarity. Okay. So, if we go back here, let us see how the current clamp is going to work. So, once now we are now 
current clamp mode. So, when we are doing current clamp, what you are measuring out here, you are measuring the change in voltage. So, your y axis is voltage in millivolt and your x axis is time in milliseconds okay. and the cell we know is sitting at minus 90 millivolt. So, this is the resting membrane potential R n p. resting membrane potential. Okay. Now, as you are injecting positive charges into inside the cell, let us see here, you are introducing say for example, imagine it like this, you are introducing positive charges inside the cell. So, what will happen is, it will be a very similar situation as that of sodium getting in inside the cell. So, this will immediately will open all the voltage gated sodium channels and all the voltage gated sodium channel will lead to a enormous flux of sodium ions inside the cell. So, as sodium ion is getting inside the cell this is what you are going to observe. The membrane voltages start to go towards the positives and this is 0, okay. it is going to go positive like this. And if it reaches something like say minus 40 or minus 30, so if we call this minus 40 and here slightly over minus 30, then this shoot something called a phenomena called all or none. It is almost the membrane as if it looks like it collapses, because then there is no way it cannot look back, it will overshoot 0 like this. That is called all or none, but it has to reach to that of minus 40 and between minus 30 and minus 40 millivolt. And if that happens, all the surrounding voltage gated channels start opening up and they will shoot an action potential. Okay. And then of course, it again comes back, because this is the time when all the potassium channels start opening and then rest is we have already studied. So, this is how you do a real current clamp measurements, where you are seeing the action potential. But now, the challenge is how we know at this part of the curve, where there is influx of sodium, there is enormous influx of sodium. How I can measure the influx of this sodium? So, in other words, these sodiums are nothing but sodium current. How I could measure the sodium current and how I could measure the other current which is the out here the potassium current which is going out of the cell. Okay. So, in order to do that, now we will move on to the next technique which is called voltage clamp. Now, we have to measure the current. So, in order to measure the current, we have to fix the voltage at different level. So, our now the way the recording will work is something like this. Now, you are measuring the current in this axis in the y axis and the x axis you have the time. current in pico ampere or nano ampere and on this you have the time in milliseconds. Okay. Assume the cell is sitting out here, the baseline. 
So, this is we are assuming at the 0 current like you know, there is no interaction of current at this point. Now, let us again go back to the configuration of the cell. So, this is where we are injecting current. Now, expose this membrane to different voltages. So, it is sitting at minus 90, okay. I make it from minus 90, I started holding holding it across. So, let me draw this. So, if you have this cell out here and you have two electrodes like this, for example, one electrode like this and there is another electrode out here like this. Now, you are changing across it the voltage minus 90 millivolt. This is where the baseline value is at this point. And then I make it minus 80 millivolt. Okay. I am holding the membrane at minus 80 across it. Okay. Once it is minus 80, what I will see may be some of the, so from the baseline I will see a small dip. So, then I move to minus, so, so this is your, let us give the corresponding number 1, trace 1, this is your trace 1, this is your trace 2, okay. then I put it to minus 70 millivolt, then I saw trace very similar, 3, then 1, 2, 3, okay. then I move to minus 60, I saw another trace coming like this, 4 minus 50, five minus 40, these are all millivolt, huh? something like this. Okay. Minus 30, this is where I will see a sh this is where all the potassium channels starts to open 30 millivolt. Okay. And simultaneously, what is happening out here? They are like this, okay. Now, as I am going further, say minus 20 minus 10, 0, 10 millivolt, 20 millivolt, what will essentially happen? These sodium current, which gets activated in a narrow window of out here, they will not any further, they will get closed down. So, now what we will be recording is this side of the circuit. So, by axiom, it is being followed that this current, you, you can show this current on both on the upper side of the axis, but it is generally people follow it to show it like this. So, this part of the circuit what you are seeing out here of the current is basically your sodium current or any form of inward current which is in entering inside the cell. Okay. And out here what you see are the outward current or one of the major outward current is the potassium current. Okay. Now, what you see eventually as you are going up with your voltage clamp traces, I will start to, start to see uh, potassium traces like this. And of course, they have a range and these currents are much more delayed. So, these the sodium current generally these kind of sodium currents are called fast activating and inactivating sodium channel or current which are which are ensuring the flow of this current and these currents are called slow activating or delayed rectifier 
potassium current or channels. Okay. So, uh, uh, just a word of caution, there are several cell types where you do not have this fast activating or inactivating sodium current. We will we'll come to those, okay. at this stage we are not getting into those, we will come to those later. Okay. At this point we are just talking about most of the neurons what they have. Okay. So, they have this fast activating and inactivating sodium current out there. Now, how to ensure that these are sodium current? This is a challenging question. So, how you can ensure is this, say for example, oh one second, you have this cell out here with let us show the sodium channel in red and show the potassium channel in any other color. Okay. The way you can show this is say for example, you have a specific uh, a very specific uh, toxin which binds to uh, one second, uh, which binds to the sodium channel. Say for example, it comes and it binds to the sodium channel. So, what you will essentially see is say for example, this yellow is the toxin what I am putting now and it is coming and binding to the sodium channel. What I will see out here in this trace is this part of the current will be abolished, this is gone, this will not be there. Instead the trace will look something like this. What I will be essentially saying is nothing and only the potassium current. So, what you have done is that you have block blocking sodium channels, thereby aborting sodium flux and this could be done using toxins like tetrodotoxin which is obtained from puffer fish which is in short it is also called TTX. Tetrodotoxin from puffer fish. This TTX could block the sodium channel. Similarly, if I have another blocker which blocks the potassium channel, what I will see going back to this uh, one second, let me go back to the higher. Then what I can do is that I can abort this part of the cell, this part of the current. This will be lost. So the way the trace will come is something like this. way it will come is that you will have the sodium current like this and that is it, you will have the all the sodium current like this. So, there would not be any, so this is where you are blocking potassium and this you do using compounds like 4 AP and tetraethyl ammonium likewise, there are series of compounds which can block the potassium current. So, you essentially see now we are able to access the ion channels which was absolutely not feasible with the sharp electrodes or even with extracellular electrodes or any other known things. That was the reason why uh, this discovery in 1970s changed the way we look. And it was the same time when pretty much the same time when PCR was discovered by Carey Mullis. So, that opened up a floodgate of cloning. Okay. So, what happens is that that was the time when molecular biology was got a huge boost and electrophysiology got a very huge boost 
in terms of the discovery by Erwin and Nihar on the patch clamp. So, all these techniques started you know marrying. So, people were developing cells where they could really specifically express sodium channels, they could express potassium channels and then they could really access the individual cells with uh, profound surety that yes that is what is happening. All the mechanisms started to come into play and simultaneously that was the time when people started using molecular biology technique to. So, let us see how all these things are being done. So, say for example, now uh, one more thing which I have forgotten to tell you people is out here. So, when this cell comes in contact out here, this is where it forms something called uh, when you pull the cell and go to this configuration out here, it forms something called a giga ohm seal, giga ohm seal. This giga ohm seal is very important because this seal ensures that there is no leakage along this, all the leakage are being prevented and it has been really measured and this was the ingenuity of the discoverer of this technique that you know, because between the glass and the cell there is a really a very strong seal which is formed and with the modern uh, software you really can see, see physically whether the giga ohm seal has formed or not. Something like if this is this, this finger of mine is an electrode and if this is the cell, so it form, forms something like that, a fantastic strong seal out there which would not allow any leakage to take place. So, this is one thing which I just missed out while I was showing you this. Okay, coming back, so what are the techniques which are being used? So, we talked about the different toxin. So, this whole field depends enormously on different kind of toxins and uh, some of these toxins are also have uh, strategic importance because they could be used uh, by the terrorists. So, there are a lot of restrictions in using these toxins, but uh, these kind of toxins have opened up a whole plethora of uh, approach to understand ion channels, okay. how they are binding, are they competitively binding, non-competitive binding, they are permanent blocker, they are likewise like this is a whole field in its own merit where all these this toxicology merges with ion channel physiology. Okay. So, coming back how most of these, so whenever we talk about ion channels. So, I told you one configuration which is a whole, uh, whole cell configuration, there could be several other configurations. So, say for example, I have this membrane out in front of me um, with the channels like this. Okay. Uh, let me complete the membrane. So, and all these channels are sitting here on its surface. Okay. Now, I take uh, take my patch pipette and then patch pipette comes here, my patch pipette is on top of a bunch of channels, one is my silver electrode and instead of filling this electrode with intracellular fluid, now I fill it with extracellular fluid. So, now the fluid here is extracellular, this is extracellular fine. At this stage instead of completely blowing away the membrane, part of that membrane, patch of that membrane, instead of going into the whole cell mode, what I did now is that I chop off, I just pull the electrode, because now it is in under the control of the, uh, what you should say, the micro manipulator, I just gently pull the membrane. Okay. Or, so, what I will essentially get is this configuration you have the electrode and inside the electrode you have this, this is the electrode. What you have is a part of the cell like this, part of the membrane like this 
and a finite number of ion channels in it. And inside this, you have the extracellular fluid which is filled it, filling it. Here it is. And then what you do? You put it in a in a chamber or in a small dish which has intracellular fluid in it. So here you have the intracellular fluid. Now what is this configuration essentially tells you is this: you have a complete control of manipulating these ion channels, a finite number of ion channels. Now, this is called you are basically this is called inside out patch. Your inside of the membrane is now exposed. So, these are special configurations which are being done to you know. So, these are special different kind of configurations which are being followed to you know to understand the ion channel behavior. Okay. So, what I will do now, I will talk a little bit more about these ones, these individual channels, how they, are, they were studied. So, I will close in here, what I expect you people really to go through these slides very carefully, because there are a lot of informations here, go through the patch clamp, understand the concept, understand current clamp and the voltage clamp and how you really can access the different ion channels. From here, what we will do? We will talk about how the molecular biology techniques helped us in understanding the different ion channel gates, uh, pores, voltage sensor and all other things. Okay. So, I will close in here. In the next class, we will discuss about all those things.